So in this first example, we have a, a city, Calculopolis, and we know its population in 1980. We also know its population in 1990. And we'd like to use that information to try to predict what the population should be in 2020. And all we're told then, additional to those uh, bits of data about populations in 1980 and 1990, is that the population grows at a rate proportional to its size. So let's collect what we know about the population. I'll let P of T be the population at time T. And since we're dealing with 1980, 1990, we're going to let this be years. So it's measured in years. So time is measured in years. And we might as well just measure it from 1980. So T equals 0 would be 1980. T equals 10 would be 1990, 10 years later. What else do we know about, uh, well, what do we know about the population? We know that, so we have some information about what's going on at 1980. What's going on at 1980? Well, that's population at time 0. And we know that value to be 25,000. We have some information about 1990. We know that the population 10 years later is 30,000. So we have this population function, which we're trying to find. We want to know what P of t is for any given t, if possible, and then use it to try to predict what happens at 2020. But all we know so far is that its value at 0 is uh, 25,000, its value 10 years later is 30,000. But there is one more bit of information we know about p. Knowing just two points that the function satisfies it does nothing to tell you what the function is. It could be linear, it could be quadratic, but there's some additional information that specifies what kind of function we should be considering. And that is we know that the population grows at a rate proportional to its size. So we know that dp dt is equal to a multiple of itself. It's proportional to itself. So there's some constant k times p. So this is for some constant k, typically called the growth constant. And it depends on the situation that you're looking at as to what this value is. And here we're looking at population growth in, a, in this city of Calculopolis, so we would need to now figure out what the corresponding k value is for this population. Okay, so here's our differential equation. We know that the function passes through these two points. p of 0 is 25,000, p of 10 is 30,000. We also know that the derivative of p is a multiple of itself. From this bit of information, we know what the function has to be in terms of form. The function's got to be an exponential function. This was our discussion on the last page. If we have a function whose derivative is a multiple of itself, it has to be an exponential function. So p of t is some a e to the kt for sum a and k. Now we need to find what a and k is for this particular function, and that's where these initial conditions come in, this initial condition and this other data point. These help us solve for a and k. So let's see what happens. We know that p of 0 is 25,000. What does that mean? Well, it means that a should be 25,000. It means that the value of a should be 25,000. Why is this? Well, this tells us that 25,000 has to be the value of the function at 0. So I pop 0 into the function, and I get then that 25,000 is a. So we know what a is. What about k? Well, we know p of 10 is 30,000. So 30,000 must be the value of the function at 10. The value of the function is a e to the k times 10. a we already found in the previous line to be 25,000. e to the k times 10, so I'll write that as 10k. That's the equation that I get using that information about the population at, at uh, time 10. Now I've got an equation in k alone, which I can solve. So I divide both sides by 25,000. That becomes then 30 over 25. 30 over 25 is equal to e to the 10k. 
30 over 25 reduces to 6 fifths. I can take the logarithm of both sides, and that becomes 10k, or in other words, k becomes 1 tenth ln of 6 fifths. So there's k. And maybe I should circle this as well. We also had our value of a. So new, using that information about uh, time 0 and time 10, that's helped us to solve for a and k. We've now done that. We've got the values of a and k. We have the form of the function. We now know the values of a and k. So we can write down explicitly what the population function is. So therefore, p of t is 25,000, that's a, e to the k, k is 1 tenth ln of 6 fifths times t. And so there's our population function. Notice we've got a function now of time alone. I can plug in any time I want now to figure out what the population has to be. In fact, I can now work out the value at uh, year 2020. That would, I'd have to figure out the corresponding time value, t value, and then just plug it in and I get the value. And we'll do that in a second, but before we get to that, I just want to point out that, okay, as we've written the function here, it involves an exponential and a logarithm. Perhaps there's a way to simplify it and write it maybe in another base, and that's what we're going to do. This is not necessary, but it certainly uh, does help to clean things up a little bit. So I'm going to look at, I've got a one-tenth multiplied to a logarithm, also a t there. So I can combine the one-tenth and the t together and move that into the exponent of what's inside the logarithm. So that's a six-fifths t over 10. So I'm just using properties of logs. Now I've got an exponential composed with a logarithm. They're inverses to each other, so they'll cancel out. And we get six-fifths t over 10. And so there is our population function in terms of t. Notice that originally we had it expressed as an exponential function of base e, but due to the nature of the k involving a logarithm, it made more sense here to express it in terms of base 6 fifths. But ultimately, all our work involved base e, and then it was just at the very end where we thought, oh, just based on the answer, it looks like it's better to phrase the answer in terms of base 6 fifths for our exponential. Now using this, we can predict what's going to go on at 2020. Uh, 2020. What's the corresponding time value at 2020? Well, it's how many years past 1980 is it? So this would be 40 years past 1980. So we can plug 40 into our newfound population function, and we get that the result is going to be 25,000 six fifths to the power of four. And this is approximately 51,840. So our population in 2020 in, of Calculopolis is approximately 51, or almost 52,000. And we got that by knowing the initial populations at a couple of different times. And the form we suspect the population function must satisfy. The growth rate should be proportional to the amount you have present.